Hello sunshines and welcome to a video about how I make my Sims 3 run very smoothly. So I often get a question how my Sims 3 runs so smooth and like what I do and I posted a poll on Twitter about whether or not I should make a video about how I make it run so good. You guys almost all voted for yes so here I am. It's probably gonna be a little bit longer of a video because there's quite much to talk about here. So before I start uh, I want to give a disclaimer. The Sims 3 is a 12 year old game and it just won't run perfectly fine on modern hardware. But there are some tweaks that I'm gonna show you how you can make your Sims 3 run as smoothly as possible, matching your video card to the game. So the first thing I'm going to be explaining to you guys is how you match your video card to your game. When you first open up your Sims 3, you probably will get a notification like this, and it will say that uh, The Sims 3 cannot find your video card. For most of us, th us this will be the case because our video cards are just um, way too modern basically to play The Sims 3 on and it just can't recognize them. So I am going to explain you guys how you can let The Sims 3 recognize your video card with just a couple of tweaks. So if you go to your documents folder and you go to Electronic Arts, The Sims 3, and then you see this file right here that says deviceconfig.log. You're going to open this with Notepad. So just click Open With and then Notepad. My like PC is in Dutch, so you're just gonna have to believe me. Then you're going to scroll down to this area right here that's called Graphics Device Info. Now you can see that mine already says found one matched one, but yours will probably say something like this. It will probably say found zero matched zero, or maybe it says one found one matched zero. If your document already says matched one, you don't need this part of the video. But because most of us have modern video cards, most of us are probably gonna need this part. So the next thing you are going to do is you are going to, I'm just gonna scoot this over right here, and you are going over to the place where you installed your Sims 3. For me, it's on my main uh, disk, so it's on my C, and then Program Files, Origin Games, The Sims 3, Game, and Bin. If you don't know where you installed it, but you do have the little icon right here on your desktop, just right click it and then you can open the file location. I'm not sure how it's called in English, but it's like probably like the second or third option and then it'll open your file. So what you want to be looking for is your graphicscards.sgr file. Now you're gonna open this with notepad as well so just select it and open it. Then this part might seem a little bit confusing but I promise you it's really not that bad and you'll, you'll get it, I promise. So depending on which vendor your graphics card is from you are going to insert a new line of text there. So we have AMD card, which, which I have. You have, let me find it, we have Nvidia, obviously, and we have Intel. So most of the Intel graphics card already are in here. So if you have an Intel graphics card and yours says matched, you don't need this part of the video, so just skip ahead. Now, this part is very important because you have to make sure you know the name of your driver. So you have to make sure you know which vendor your card is from and which which series your like graphics card is. So as you can see right here where it says name driver and also name database, you can see I have an AMD Radeon RX 6600 card. So as you can see, I already inserted it right here, but if you don't, you're going to have to insert another line like right there. Now for people who have an Nvidia card, you're just gonna scroll down until you see Nvidia. It's quite a, it's, it's quite, it's quite a scroll. I'm gonna tell that. So there you have it. It's right here, Fender, Nvidia, blah, 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 blah. So if you have an Nvidia card, you're gonna insert a row right there. 
And if you have an AMD card, it's going to be listed ATI and you're just going to add a row right there. So what you're going to do is you're going to enter, press tab, write down card 0x and then this is the part where we are going to differ because as you can see right here, I inserted 73FF and that if, if you come down to your chipset and then go to device, you can see your own personal code for your graphics card right here. So it's very important that you're not copying my code because it's we're going to differ there. Unless you have the exact same graphics card as I do, you are going to have a different code here. So ne uh, next to the X, you're going to write down your code. In my case, it's 73FF. Again, your code is going to differ. Then press space. Then you're going to add quotation marks and then you are going over to your name and driver and you are just going to copy this. So just copy it and paste it right here and then add another quotation mark. So I'm going to delete this because I already have it. After you have done that, just go down here and press save and then just exit it out. Then go back to your bin folder for The Sims 3 and open up the graphics rules sgr.sgr again with Notepad. So this, if you thought the like previous one was like difficult, this is going to be a whole lot of gibberish that is, uh, might seem a little bit intimidating. I sure thought it was intimidating when I first had to do this. If you open this, you will see right here, it says SETI texture memory. And then with you, it will probably say something like 32. You're going to come to Google and search up your graphics cards VRAM. So if you have the same graphics card as I do, you are going to have eight gigabytes of VRAM. You can just search up the name of your video card and add VRAM behind it. That stands for virtual RAM. So this is important to know because if you have eight gigabytes of uh, VRAM, you are going to put like half of it right here. So eight gigabytes is about 8,000 megabytes and you're going to about like divide it in half and that's what you're going to insert right here. So I have eight gigabytes, so I inserted 4,096. I'm gonna leave on the screen what you have to do and how much you need to put here. If you have like one gigabyte, two gigabyte, uh, four gigabytes, six gigabyte, eight gigabytes, or 16 gigabytes. Then in the next row, you are not going to have a little hashtag right here. So go ahead, add it right here, insert a space, and then save it. So when you have done this, then there's only one thing that's probably very confusing for a lot of people. So please pay close, close attention. If you don't trust yourself, please make a backup of this file. Uh, onto your desktop. I still have it right here because I don't want to fuck anything up, you know, just to be sh to be safe. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and you're gonna find your vendor. So if you have Nvidia, it will say right here. If you have AMD, it's gonna say match card vendor ATI. So because I have a AMD card, I'm going to say right here in the match card vendor ATI. And now this part is very important. If you come over to your device config log and scroll all the way up and you see right here your rating info, you can see a like number behind your GPU. This is how like, and my GPU is rated an Uber setting. If you have a five right here, it's an Uber uh, rating. If you have a four here, it's a high rating. If you have a three here, it's medium. If you have a two, it's low medium or medium low. And if you have a one, it's low. Now, if you have looked up your rating for your GPU, you are going to locate it right here. So remember, Uber is five, high is four, medium is three, low medium is two, and low is one. So Uber people, we are going to insert our code right here. So I already have something here. If you have something here, just delete it so that you only have this comma right here. Then after this comma, you're gonna add a space, then a quotation mark, an asterisk. 
And then this is also a part where we are going to differ. So you're going to look up the name of your driver of your graphics card and you are going to look what series this is. So I have a Radeon RX 6600. So what I am going to do, I'm going to insert RX and then 66. Now, if you have a, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX like 1080, you're going to insert in obviously the NVIDIA thing, you're going to insert GTX and then 10. Then after you add the two numbers, you're going to do two question marks. So you're not going to put the zeros here or like the 80 if you have a NVIDIA 1080 uh, or GTX 1080 you're going to add two question marks right here. Now, if you have a graphics card that only has three numbers, you're going to only insert the first one and then two quotation marks. Not quotation marks, question marks, I'm sorry. Then after the question marks, you're going to add an asterisk and then a quotation mark and then two of these thingies. <laughs> Your line is always going above the setting that says whether what your GPU setting is. So like it's going above Uber, it's going above high, it's going above medium, it's going to be above low medium. So if you have a high rating, you are going to insert it right here. If you have a medium rating, you're gonna insert it right here. If you have a low medium rating, you're gonna insert it right there, okay? So this was the confusing part. I promise you it's all gonna be easy from now on. So when you have done all of this, you're going to want to save it and I'm not gonna save it, but, uh, and you're going to just quit out of everything. Then the next thing you're going to do is launch your Sims 3 and then finally at last it should say, then finally it should say found one matched one. So this was the most confusing part of the whole video and you guys did it. I'm so proud of you. And now we're going on to the next part, mashing your CPU to the game. So the next part is matching your CPU to your game. So this part is very important so that your CPU is going to be uh, running as well as it's able to. So what you're going to do is you're going again to your bin folder and you're going to open up graphicsrules.sgr. Now, right here, you see SETI, CPU level, Uber, high, medium, and low. Now, I promise this part is very easy because the only thing you're going to change is these will probably say two and one. And you're just gonna change these to three and three. The rest you're gonna just keep like this. You're just gonna say four, three, three, and three. Then again, just save it and exit it out. And literally, that's it. You have now matched your CPU to your game. Now you can exit all of this out. You can uh, test run your Sims 3. So you can just open it and quit out of it when you're in your main menu. So we're gonna quit out of all of this and we're officially done with the graphicscar.str and the graphicsrugles.str files. Good job. Limiting your FPS. So the next thing you are going to do is limit your FPS. So The Sims 3 is kind of uh, an interesting game when it comes to FPS. So sometimes it goes up to 400 FPS. Well, the game can't even handle that. So that causes your insane lag spikes and insane just freezes and that's the main reason why that happens because your fps is all over the place so if you have an amd card like i do you are going to open up your radiant software then next you're going to locate games and the sims 3. now you're going to need to know what your like monitor rating is so i have a 165 hertz monitor but most of you guys will probably either have a 60 fps or a 144 hertz so what you're going to do if you're in this menu you're going down to radeon chill turn it on and then your minimal fps is kind of like yeah you know like when it's doing nothing this is your minimal fps so you can put it on like the max rating of your monitor or you can 
put it a little bit lower, but don't go above like what your monitor can handle. Your max FPS though is where it's at. So you are going to insert, like if you have a 60 Hertz monitor, you're gonna add 60. If you have a 144 Hertz monitor, you're gonna add 144. And I inserted 165 because my monitor is 165 Hertz. So literally that's all you have to do if you have an AMD system. So if you have an Nvidia system, you're going to come over here and search up Nvidia control panel and you're going to uh, go over to three manage 3D settings, then scroll down to max frame rate and add that to whatever your monitor can handle. So the 60 hertz, 144, 165, whatever the max rating of your monitor is. Then you're also going to scroll all the way down and uh, turn triple buffering on and VSync on. So if you don't have an AMD or a NVIDIA graphics card, I'm not sure if you're going to be having like a built-in frame manager, frame rate manager, but I will leave a link down below of a FPS manager that's rated pretty good and people tell pretty good things about, so you can check that out. Disabling your featured items folder. Now the fourth thing that we're going to go over is you're going to uh, open your documents folder and go to your Sims 3 files. Then right over here, you are going to see the featured items folder. And I already can't enter it because I already did this. This basically generates all the thumbnails of the store items and it will just keep regenerating here itself. So what I did is I went over to properties then I went over to privacy and what you're going to do is you're going to uh, go to edit and you're gonna click on decline or whatever it says right here. Uh, and you're gonna add like full management and you're gonna decline everything. Then you're gonna click the save button and you're gonna click OK and then it should be all done. My settings menu. Okay, so I'm now in my options menu in The Sims 3 and as you can see, I have everything on the like highest setting because I'm not gonna be, you know, sacrificing my graphics. I refuse. But I'm going to show you a couple of things that I changed in my settings menu that just make me think that my game runs a little bit smoother just and loads just a little bit faster, you know? So the first thing I want to show you is that I do not have my interactive loading screens on. So these are like the loading screens where you can click things and just earn lifetime reward points for your family. I have this off because I believe it just loads a little bit faster if I don't have this setting on. Now I also do not enable these two. I don't enable the shop mode. I don't enable the lessons. I've been playing The Sims 3 for a while now. I don't need lessons, you know. And the shop mode I also have off because it just annoys the crap out of me. So, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I I turn this off. Then the next thing I want to show you is I do not have any online notifications enabled. I don't have my player profile locked in because I just feel like it just... It, the game runs so much worse when I have this on, I feel like. And just like sim port is just annoying. And so I have everything off because I believe it just makes my game run a little bit better when I do this. Now, also a thing, I normally have all of these off except for pets and horses. But right now I am playing with Supernatural. So I'm having these on in my game. But normally I turn basically all of these off almost all of these off except for like pets and horses for example because these will populate like all of this and it just makes your game lag a lot so <laughs> so i don't know i just turn these off i don't need this in my game i can make them myself if i want to and if i want to play with them i just click these on and it'll generate them automatically so that is basically it for my graphics as you can see everything is on very high. Now, because I have an AMD card, my mirrors don't work as they should. I don't know why, but that's just a Sims 3 thing, you know, and I don't get too bothered by it. But if you have that as well, if you have an AMD card and your mirrors, even though this is like on the highest setting, 
just don't worry about it. But don't worry about it. It's just an AMD thingy that just doesn't is compatible enough with The Sims 3. I don't know why it is, but whatever. Override of the memory system. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you is the like kind of override mod for the memory system. Because in the like base game, you get memories for visiting the park. Every time your sim goes to a park, you get a memory from it. And it's just so stupid. I don't understand why it exists. So I downloaded this mod. So this mod allows you to only have import memories like getting married, moving in together, giving birth. And you can even have a tool that you can click on any setting that gives a memory and just and just uncheck it or check it. So you can just go ahead over here and download it and just download the like zip file and put that in your mods folder. The Sims 3 smoothness patch. Now the next thing I'm going to show you might change your entire world because a modder, yes, just like Lazy Duchess has created a smooth patch for The Sims 3. And if I tell you this works, it really works. So it's, as it says, it's not an all-in-one solution for lag, but you see a huge improvement in your game. So make sure you do all these tweaks I've told you and then also install this because uh, it just it just changes your world. So I have an origin version. So I have installed this one and you're going to install it into your game bin folder. So the folder that I have right here where we tweak in the like graphics cards and the game graphics rules, you are just going to unzip it and drag that all over here. So now you have the Sims 3 patch launcher.exe. One note, you all always have to launch the game from this, this little file. You can drag it onto your desktop because then it won't work anymore. So make sure it's still right here. I just added a copy of my bin folder right onto my desktop so I can exit it very easily. And now if you open the Sims 3 patch.txt, you're going to be in this and it's your TPS limit. Now TPS is sticks per second, like it says right here, and it's the speed of processing logic. So if you have a high-end PC, you can put it on a thousand. It's on 500 by default. So if you don't have a PC that is high end, uh, don't put a thousand here, just to keep it on 500. Enra's Essentials. All right, so I'm here in my game. I loaded into the same file of um, my boyfriend playing this in three. So we're, we're just gonna ignore this, okay? We're just gonna ignore this. We're going over to the next part of the video, which is my Enra's Essentials. So if you don't know what Enra's is, it's basically uh, a person who created a whole bunch a bunch of mods uh, that just make your game perform way better. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is your Overwatch. So Overwatch basically cleans up the whole town at like 3 a.m. in your game. So if you go over to settings, you can just see all of this. It cleans up elevators, concert, homeless. I, I usually have this off, by the way, um, but it... It just, you can turn all of this on. A lot of people get annoyed by this because you get like nightly notifications, but you can just turn it off, you know? And it, because at 3 a.m. your game will probably lag a little bit or have a lag spike because it's cleaning everything up in the town that doesn't need to be there or it's creating unnecessary like lag. So you can set the alarm hour right here at three and you can just have this to false and you don't get the display of nightly notifications anymore. And it'll just make your game run also like smoother through the night, but you also don't get like a whole bunch of notifications up right here. You can even turn on testing cheats enabled when like, if you put that to true, it will always be on. It's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. I cannot, this is really the one like mod that you really, 
really need in your game. The next mod I want to talk about is the master controller. So basically what this does is you can tweak everything in your game. And one thing I love the most about this is if you go over to settings to cast, you can put show in compact form and it's like accessories, clothing and hats. So if you put this to true, basically what happens if you, is you don't see like three swatches of every clothing item, but it will just show you one swatch. And if I tell you, your cast loads so much faster if you have this on. I promise you it's gonna change the world. Now, one thing you need to install as well is the integration module for Master Controller if you want to have this to work. So if you don't have the integration module, you're not you're only gonna be able to like click on your sim. Um oh click on your oh, god Jesus. Click on your sim, click and ROS Master Controller. It's under advanced and then editing cast. So that's the only way it's gonna show up. If you want to be able to just like plan outfits and have it also in compact form, you're going to need the integration module. Just leaving that. Uh, I will link it all down below in the comments or in the like description. I promise you that it, it will work like that. The next mod I want to show you is Error Trap. So you can see it right here in the menu, but basically what it does is every time it, uh, like a sim gets stuck or just an error happens in your game, it will make a little notification right here. It will say like Error Trap recorded one and it will leave a like a file in your documents folder, but it also just cleans out your sound a little bit every time somebody gets stuck. Now the next thing is Enros register. So basically what this does is you can have animal control and I usually put this to one deer, one raccoon, two stray cats and two stray dogs and I turn these off because if you know The Sims 3, you know that horses have the worst routing. Like it just, they get stuck. They are not able to walk just like properly. Like, don't get me wrong. I love horses in this game, but just no wild horses because they screw up your game so badly that it becomes just unplayable. So this is a great mod if you want to want to do the animal control. Now you can also literally turn tourists off. I also have the two off because tourists just come into your town and just take space basically and they won't be tourists that actually live in the like uh like china or egypt or france no they just get randomly generated by the game and it'll just fill up your save file and it makes it unplayable so i have this off because it annoys me then the last one i want to show you is the enros go here so what this uh, uh, allows you to do is you can disallow and allow routing what this allows you to do is disallow or allow routing so for example if you know the sims 3 island paradise or no what, what's it called island paradise oh, oh god i don't remember the name but whatever it, it has houseboats in isla paradiso and if you have played in isla paradiso you just know that boat routing is one of the worst things that has ever happened to the sims 3 so you can just turn it off right here and it actually helps your game so much now you can disable car routing but this is the main setting I touch here and it just makes your game so much better. Cleaning up unnecessary files. Now the very last thing you are going to do is clean out your unnecessary files in your document Sims 3. So there are about five files you can delete every time you have played the game that will just regenerate, but it's better if you just constantly like after every session of like my sims 3 i come into this folder delete it and then i can just have a clean game uh when i start again so these files include your cast part catch dot package compositor catch dot package your script catch dot package your sim compost compositor catch dot package and your social catch dot package. Now, if you have error trap, you will see like script errors right here. You can choose to email them to the like creator or you can just delete them, what I usually do. And you can just click delete. You can do this every time you close your game and it'll just 
But it, it doesn't maybe do a lot, but it does something, you know, better to do all the little things and then uh, it'll run perfectly fine. So that's all I have for you today. This is how I tweak my game to run perfectly smooth. And of course, like I said in the beginning, it's not gonna run like as a game that has been made in 2022. It's gonna have some lag spikes. It's gonna freeze sometimes because it's just old. It was made in 2009 and it just, you know, you have to give it a break sometimes. But this is all I did to make my game run as smoothly as possible. And I can insert a like little video clip of how my game used to run when I didn't have these tweaks yet and how it runs now. So you can clearly see the difference here. But I really hope this works for you guys. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask them. And I will just see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.